Hey, we're delving deeper into lesson number 28. Now, Babylon sits upon the beast, but she's not in control as if she was riding a horse. No, the beast allows her her seat, her purchase. Now, John identifies the beast as scarlet with seven heads and ten horns, covered in blasphemy. Now, in chapter 12, the dragon was introduced as a fiery red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns upon those heads. Now, we've identified the dragon as the being that opposes God's sovereignty. Now, in chapter 13, the dragon gives its power and authority to the beast, so the dragon can sit back and let the beast do its dirty work. Now, the blasphemies refer to the beast's self-exaltation as God. Now, blasphemy is an insult to the one who sits upon the throne, the one who was and is and is to come, the sovereign strong, the ancient of days. Anything or anyone who infringes on God's supreme and unique authority blasphemies. Now, let's bring this into a little tighter focus. Denying the existence of God or mocking his teachings, that's blasphemy. Knowing that God, what he desires, but choosing to reject God's will and replace it with your own, that's blasphemy. Calling something to be your God other than God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ is blasphemy. Using God's name as an expletive is blasphemy. Saying something is of God, but really just invoking God's name to manipulate is using God's name in vain, and that is blasphemy. Any lack of reverence of God or his words, uh, 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 any contempt of God, it's all blasphemy. Disrespect of God in all of its manifestations is blasphemy, and the ultimate blasphemy is having entered into a right relationship with God and then rejecting all that you've come to believe. Hebrews 6, chapter 4. Once people have seen the light, gotten a taste of heaven, and been part of the work of the Holy Spirit, once they have personally experienced the sheer goodness of God's word and the powers breaking in on us, if then they turn their backs on it, washing their hands of the whole thing, well, they can't start all over again as if nothing happened. That's impossible. Why? They've crucified Jesus. They've repudiated him in public. Parched ground soaks up the rain and then produces an abundance of carrots and corn for the gardener. It gets God's well done. But if it produces weeds and thistles, it's more likely to get cussed out. Fields like that are burned, not harvested. And so, my friends, stay faithful. Don't blaspheme. Let the Holy Spirit show you areas where you might be compromising with the beast and get rid of them.